<laughs> yeah, so, Martin. Hi there, Ted. So great to see you. Uh, yeah, it's been a little while since I spoke in uh, your your neck of the woods. Yeah, it's been a couple of years since you were over here in Stockholm. It was a delight to take your seminar here in Stockholm, and I hope to get you back over here as well. So oh, thank you. I'd love to go back. It was a, just a gorgeous city, and uh, I didn't realize the water was so clean. Yeah. Somebody told me they actually uh, go fishing for salmon yeah. in the waters off of Stockholm. I mean, right off the pier. Yeah, yeah. Which... here in Old Town, just you know, the waters just it surrounds the Old Town. There's people standing uh, fishing. Yeah. It's yeah, nice. I was very impressed. Yeah. <laughs> so of all the things in Stockholm, fishing was what impressed me the most. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, I met a lot of really great people, and uh, it was just a very nice class and seminar. We, we did KST. Yes. And, and I can talk a little bit about that. Uh, core yeah. and specific technique, KST, that we're going to dive into, how that came into be. So for the listeners, whether you're a chiropractor, a practitioner of any kind, we just lay people that's interested to know more how to improve your health through a very, very specific way of asking the body what is it that is not working? Where's the disturbance in carpet? We call it subluxation. But you have a beautiful way of detecting it, asking the body what's priority and finding yes. and allowing the adjustment to uh, set on that innate intelligence doing its work. So yeah. let's dive Me into too. your wisdom and all your experience and knowledge this Thank you. coming hour. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Yeah, we talk about the wisdom of the body, but why don't we use it? Yeah, <laughs> it, it is accessible. We can use it. What's called, a, I call it binary biofeedback. Uh, it's just uh, a way of getting the body's reaction to questions and stress. And the questions can be asked in many ways. We could do it physically, uh, verbally, or even mentally. Uh, I was fascinated by this. Had somebody mentioned this to me years ago, I would have said they were, you know, a little, little fairy dust uh, sort of settled into their brains. It just was too far out. Um, but it worked so well, I couldn't deny it. So I was in a bad accident. It wasn't a car accident. It was a home accident, and I got a concussion and a whiplash and uh, almost lost my fingers uh, mm -hmm. from the, the damage. Uh, it was pretty bad. And what happened was uh, I had uh, on top of I couldn't use my hands. They, they were in constant pain, my wrists, my hands, my elbows, my shoulders. Uh, I couldn't make a fist. I couldn't open my hands fully. And uh, I gave up my license to practice. I was practicing as a chiropractor. I actually gave up my license because I couldn't function. Yeah. Um, I also had sciatica, which had bothered me off and on over the years. But this time it really got worse. And some days I couldn't walk more than 10 feet, uh, no matter where I was, in the city, on a beach park, I'd have to sit on the floor, on the ground, mm -hmm. and then wait uh, a minute or two, and then the pain would subside and I'd be able to walk again. So this went on for 10 long years. And within that time, I saw all the chiropractors I could, and oh, dozens, because being well known in the profession for my writings and lecturing at the time, I... Uh, I'd always see, I'd always ask who's the best person here <laughs> whenever I was traveling in different cities to give talks to state associations. And uh, I get worked on. I also went to MDs, osteopaths, physical therapists, uh, body workers of all kinds, craniosacral, all good stuff, um, acupuncture, uh, all kinds of massage and all great stuff, wonderful people. I was still a mess. And one day, I just, after 10 years, I said, uh, I can't go on like this. I didn't want to resort to drugs, surgery, inject, you know, steroid injections, painkillers. I, I knew I would never do that, but it was getting so bad. I didn't know what to do. So I started experimenting on myself. And I accidentally combined two different procedures that independently could not help me. And I'd been to 40 to 50 different chiropractors and MDs and osteopaths and all. So they tried everything. Uh, and I was still miserable. Uh, I combined two different procedures which separately did not help, but the synergy was very powerful. Yeah. And I used a, an instrument, uh, an adjusting instrument. You can use any instrument. 
Now I realize you can even use your fingers, but the mechanical instrument works a little better. And uh, <coughs> I, I located exactly what everybody else missed. And after 10 years of suffering, I was out of pain in five days. Yeah. Uh, my sciatica, however, I had had for 20 years before my accident. So I, by that time, I'd had it 30 years. And that took about six weeks to disappear completely. It would have happened in less time, but I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I was my first patient. <laughs> so I was experimenting on myself. My wife, Beth, had migraines for 12 years since uh, pregnant with our first child. And I found nobody could help her either. I found one little area to to correct, adjust, tap, whatever. And uh, she never had a migraine since. Mm -hmm. So I thought, my God, is this something significant or is this just a fluke, an accident? Yeah. You know, serendipity. So I decided to, uh, when I, I, I was lecturing a lot, I was touring all around the country and in Canada. So I decided to uh, make an announcement right before I dismiss all the doctors for lunch or whatever, I'd say, okay, I think I've discovered something. I don't have a name for it. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it seems to be very powerful. And anyone who ha has a, a health problem that you can't get rid of, that you've been not well for a long time, see me during the break. So I thought one or two doctors would stop by. The line went out the door. <laughs> and uh, oh boy, everybody was a mess. And I found what everybody else missed, apparently. This is what doctors later on said it. So, anyway, I did that for about 16 months, seeing over a thousand of the worst cases. I'm doctors like me that nobody else can help who tried everything. And the results were so astounding. Well, first of all, they started bringing their wives and uh, office assistants and their kids. So, that was sort of nice. Uh, but the results were so powerful. Uh, then I decided to start teaching after many requests. And thank thank God I've taught about 5,000 uh, doctors, mostly, uh, core and specific technique, KST. And the uh, the feedback has been just exceptional. Yeah. And we realized that when we're, you're communicating with the body and looking for the hidden stresses that everybody else misses, you can apply it to get rid of learning disorders like dyslexia get rid of phobias, bad habits, emotional trauma that never left the body or the body mind that is still affecting someone in the day-to-day -day life, uh, even allergies. So we really uh, accidentally um, discovered a way of locating areas that other doctors just miss. And uh, I'm, I'm really gratified uh, to have been able to teach this. So that's, in a, in a nutshell, the very beginning of KST, corn specific technique. And um, we teach it at seminars. We have a home study. People can go online at corinwellness.com and learn the work. Uh, we don't limit it to chiropractors or uh, healthcare professionals. We've had a lot of uh, um, lay people come and learn the seminar to take care of their wives and their children and themselves. Uh, there's no law against working on yourself. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> At least not yet. So um, I've been teaching it uh, and it's been it's been a great experience and I'm still learning. Every patient teaches me something. Yeah. I think our patients are our best teachers. That's for sure. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, when you start getting feedback uh, from people, and we learn. Actually, my work was was based on failure. Everyone that we couldn't get them better, we kept digging deeper. Kept, yeah. I kept asking why, 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 and we uh, realized that you can actually correct without surgery. You can correct discs. And I've seen this. Uh, people. I've had so many people scheduled for back surgery who never needed the surgery. And within a very short time also, um, funny thing, you know, with patients, I uh, had one guy come in, he he, he was he came in to do some work at the house, and he, uh, I see he's walking funny, I, and I asked him, he said he's got back surgery scheduled for next week, he's uh, got this disc problem, uh, MRIs show lots of bad discs, so, uh, so I grab him, and I say, come into my office, 
And uh, he, I saw him a few times. He canceled the back surgery. He went back to his part-time job as an emergency medical technician, uh, picking up heavy people and carrying stuff. He was a chef also. So oh. it's a great little story. But the funny thing was the best correction, the most sensitive area, was not his spine, but his femur head, the top of his thigh bone. Yeah. And that was when that was corrected, his pains went away. And I thought, oh, my God, if he had had back surgery on his spine, he would have been another failed back surgery patient. Yeah. And as we know, over half of all back surgeries fail. The person is in as much or worse pain within about two years. Hmm. So, uh, And sometimes they need a second operation and then a third. So KST, thankfully, has saved people from a lot of that, uh, a lot of surgery. Yeah. But my my most fun is working on little children. Yeah. When you have a kid with dyslexia or reading or math or other reading, pro, you know, other problems. And you, kids are great because by definition, they've not been as sick as long as their parents. So <laughs> they're young and they have lots of vitality. Yeah. Uh, this is, you know, and we, we can learn a lot from homeopathy, for example. They're always talking about the vital vitality of a person. And children have wonderful vitality. That's why that's the ideal time. What is it? Five, six, seven, that you get childhood diseases, so-called diseases, which are really crises of detoxification, of purification. And that's that's the perfect time to have it because that's when the kids have the most vitality. That's when they can generate an intense fever to burn off poisons and uh, a rash to expel toxicity. And we know now, I mean, this has been known since ancient times. It's, it was just folk wisdom that these conditions heal a person, that parents report <clears throat> growth spurts, intellectual spurts after measles, after mumps, after chickenpox, what have you. And we now know that when you suppress an acute you know, illness like fever, yeah. rash, when you suppress it with drugs or vaccines, you drive it deeper into the body. And unfortunately, we are seeing study after study showing that um, people that, uh, well, actually, the good news is people that have childhood diseases and go through them, many of them, uh, have less cancer and heart disease as adults. Mm. And this is incredibly important to understand. Uh, so much of, of KST, when you ask the body, one of the things you can ask the body for, apart from spinal and back and neck and head and other things, uh, other areas that need adjusting are, is this person toxic? Yeah. And the toxicity comes from uh, many areas. One is dental, from mercury fillings or from root canals or wisdom teeth that were never properly cleaned. Um, and that's terribly common and it can cause tremendous problems. Um, and now there's material linking... Um, bad teeth, dental infections to Alzheimer's, um, MS, Parkinson's, all kinds of dementias and arthritis and God knows what else. And so the list is very long. So the work KST is really a means of exploration. And we, you know, and actually being a chiropractor uh, is a protective to me because when I criticize uh, vaccinations or drugs, I don't have the threat of somebody pulling my license. Yeah. And this is, of course, I think chiropractors and natural healers are really uh, one of the main sources of honest, truthful information today. The medical profession has sadly been compromised. I say that uh, with a full awareness of medical education. My two younger brothers are MDs. And uh, uh, one of them, uh, and they would tell me, you know, how much of their education was financed by the pharmaceutical companies and uh, so much of the schools are and the journals are and so you know you see you get a medical journal and you see full page ads for drug after drug in full color um that is really supporting the the journals yeah so you you have a terrible financial conflict of interest and this is serious and america they passed a very stupid law saying that pharmaceutical companies could advertise prescription drugs uh, on TV and the media. 
And well, now the media is pretty much beholden to pharmaceuticals uh, because they make so much, you know, that's their, they get their largesse from. Um, only two countries in the world permit this, the US and New Zealand. I have no idea why New Zealand uh, is so corrupt, but the US, it's terrible. They And it's one of the dumbest things ever done. Mm. And people are easily manipulated, unfortunately. Yeah. But anyway, T back to KST. Back to um, KST find yeah. that the doctors are finding all kinds of great things, uh, locating um, areas of stress. And it could be physical, it could be emotional. It could be a sort of a mind-body thing, because you can't separate physical and emotional. Uh, physical, emotional, toxicity, um, and other areas. Sometimes we'll find things we're really not aware of of what it means but there's a blockage and what all healers all natural healers look for blockages and what's preventing you from being 100 percent you 100 yes. percent healthy yeah. and we have blockages all over our bodies uh and minds that need to be looked at and corrected and it can be done easier than people are, are aware of yes yeah. so um you know, block and uh, acupuncture. They use needles to get energy flowing. And osteopaths, uh, I know in Europe the osteopaths are better than in America because they're not so medical. Um, they use uh, manipulation to get blood flowing, arterial blood flowing. Chiropractors use the adjustment to get uh, the the nerve impulse flowing through the body. Um, and detox is a way of block, getting rid of blockages. There are many ways of doing it. I think the future of healing truly is getting rid of blockages and detoxification of the person. Yeah. And that is, uh, that's the beauty of it. And uh, you can actually locate blockages very quickly and easily uh, on a patient. And one of the things we discovered was uh, these blockages, chiropractors call them subluxations, these blockages are posture specific, meaning that when you're standing, you may not have the same damage as you when you're sitting. And I've uh, I worked on people who, when they get into the position that hurts them, where well, pain is a good indicator, um, not always, but often it is. When they get into the position of pain, uh, it reveals that's where the damage can be revealed. So you work on people in their posture. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't have to be pain. Um, a lot of my students work on professional and amateur athletes. Who uh, It improves your golf swing, yeah. your tennis swing, uh, play, you know, uh, baseball, football, or uh, soccer. You call it football there, right? Yeah. You don't call it soccer. Okay, football. Oh, yeah, it's called, soccer is called football here. And what's American football called? Uh, American football. Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Very logical. So, uh, yeah, I remember I was uh, giving a talk in Italy, and uh, this one doctor there, he just showed photos of these world-class soccer players that he was seeing. He said, we have these incredible coincidences. After they get KST care, uh, they start, uh, they have the best games ever. He said, he said, these are great coincidences, and uh, we seem to be creating a lot of coincidences using this work. Yeah. <laughs> but you can also do it um, no matter what. I mean, when kids are reading, you can find blockages, and that's how you know dyslexia uh, can be corrected in that way. When uh, I remember, I didn't know about this in the beginning of doing the work, but posture can be physical or emotional exactly, or physiological. Yeah. There's all kinds of postures. So I was in Chicago. I was on stage giving a talk on about the importance of posture. And then uh, one guy said, uh, can this help dyslexia, you know, reading? Yeah. And I hadn't thought about it. I said, well, it should be. I mean, you know, yeah, I guess uh, this, the theory is right. And if the theory is correct, it should help dyslexia. And I asked to the audience, anybody here have dyslexia? Well, that guy raised his hand, <laughs> the one who asked the question. And he came up on stage. He was about in his 50s. And he said he's not able to read. He said going to school was a torture. He uh, His friends would be out playing after school. They'd do their homework in a half hour. And for three hours, he's still doing his homework. 
and chiropractic school was practically an impossibility. Uh, the letters are always jumbled. He has to sit quietly, and the letters have to be interpreted. So uh, he said it's been really bad. He's had it all his life. And so I said, well, um, let me check you without reading, right? I just And I cleared out a few things that or he had out of position, cranials, I remember, stuff like that. But And that took a minute or two. And then I said, okay, now let's see. So I asked somebody to bring me something to read. And some doctor brought a magazine and handed it to him. And he started reading it. Oh. His whole body locked up. Every part of his body. I mean, it was incredible. So I corrected the blockages uh, that occurred uh, using KST, of course, using the instrument while he was reading. Oh. And that was standing and sitting. Mm. For some reason, reading standing and reading sitting are very significant. Yeah. Uh, anyway... And reading quietly and out loud. Yeah. So I corrected though. It took about two or three minutes. <laughs> uh, the stuff doesn't have to take long. And uh, I said, uh, that's it. So he looked at me and said, that's it. And I said, well, I don't have anything else, nothing else to do. Your mm, reading doesn't elicit any, any subluxations, any blockages. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he gave me a funny look. Like, uh, I can't believe I spent money on this seminar, look. <laughs> and he sat down, and uh, I start my, I continue my talk. And uh, I hear crying. Mm. And it's, it's the guy who I had just worked on. And I thought, oh, God, what did I do this time? <laughs> and I said, are you okay? He said, I'm reading. Mm. He said, for the first 10 time in my life, I can read the letters are all normal. Yeah. And that's what started me to realize the potential of this work for uh, mental issues, uh, processing issues, uh, dyslexia being only one of many uh, uh, learning disorders. Yeah. You know, this learning disorders with writing. It's called dyscalculia. Yeah. Uh, dyslexia, dyscalculia is writing as math. That's math. Dysgraphia excuse me, yeah, yeah, yeah. writing, um, and probably many others. So uh, that has apparently great potential. Just that alone yeah. is really good. But uh, when you put people in different postures, a lot of times when it's um, ball players, it's physical posture. Although when an athlete gets really great, real, you know, top of the line, most of their problems are more emotional than physical. Yeah. The, their father told them they'd never be a winner. That's there. And that might be holding them back for a split second in being perfect, uh, in ideal in their performance. Or they hate the coach. Or there's a problem with their their roommate or one of their teammates. And it's amazing the little things that you can find that can make such a big difference. Uh, for really, I'm talking about athletes. Anybody, really. We all have these uh, little things. Uh, well, we're born here to perfect ourselves. Yeah, that's for sure. So yeah. I think KSC helps that. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful book. And uh, in the story that it's told now, it was like, you know, um, a smile extra when, the, the, you, you know, you were done after three, four minutes and the guy looking at you like, uh, is there nothing more? Because most people that have a perception that, there must be so much to do and the, the more serious your problem the longer you've had your problem the more intervention you need but that it's the beauty of kst and other ways you know it's a way to ask the nervous system the body what is it, the block it what is needed and give oh, yeah. more and no less what's the priority and when is there is uh, you know just time for integration and yes. you ask the body for that as well with kst which is beautiful all right right I mean, the, the the part of the KSD way of working is, you know, to ask, is, is there anything more? Is it done? You know, is that oh, so, yeah. so, so much the, built into the way that you work with the body. It's always in uh, continuous communication with the system, asking, does it need more support or not? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and sometimes uh, when you get to a point and the body says, stop. Yeah. 
uh, and there's no more priorities. Now yeah. it could be that they need a few minutes to integrate what yeah. you've done because you, you shouldn't over adjust or over correct or do yeah. too much. And that's true of every healing art. Yeah. Doctors sort of get carried away and say, well, I did little, it helped him a lot. Let me do even more. And yeah. that could be counterproductive. So you you wait and then you let them rest a little bit. Could be just a few seconds mm. or a few minutes. And you might find that the body is now ready for more care yeah. or that's the end of the, that's the end. Yeah. We've had enough right now. And that's, you have to respect the body. And I, I like to tell people, sometimes the best thing a doctor can do is nothing. Mm. <laughs> Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. So I've, uh, I've been very fortunate. Uh, I mean, my 10 years of, of pain and suffering um, turned into something that turned into be a blessing. Yeah. So it's blessing in disguise. Um, so I have a new prayer. All right. Yes, it's a dear Lord, Lord, uh, dear Lord, please send me a blessing that's not in disguise for a change. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the people in... Um, in Sweden were wonderful. You, you you attracted some really great doctors. I'd love to come back. Yeah, I'd love to have you over as well. Uh, a lot of times, not a lot, but a good number of times, I've given uh, talks the day before yeah. to the general public. Yeah. And uh, it was funny. One town in Pennsylvania, in New Jersey, Lakewood, New Jersey, they asked me to give a talk on vaccination and nutrition, ch children's health. I said, sure. And when I got there, oh, my God, the place was over flooded. It was standing room only. And uh, I said, what happened? How, you, you guys did great advertising. It says, not really. What happened was when the MDs heard you were coming, they put ads in the local papers telling everyone to stay away. Uh. <laughs> so, well, as a result, everybody wanted to know, <laughs> what am I going to talk about? <laughs> so the place got packed. <laughs> I said, well, the next time I, I speak, please let the MDs know first. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, it was funny. Um, but the general public is hungry for information. And they want to know what works. All I care about is what works. Exactly. And that's what the thing, I mean, there's, there's uh, uh, some people might think you as controversial, you know, about vaccinations and uh, cancer and other topics that you've written about. Uh, end of the day, it all comes to, down to the results. What works and, what is. And, and your work do work. So that's the only reason. That's the only thing that matters. Uh, yeah. Theory is nice. Yeah. But theory, uh, you can die for a theory that is totally wrong. Yeah. Look at the millions of people that died for communism. Yeah. The Nazis, theories, crazy theories. But people were willing to just follow it blindly. And right now, we are following a lot of medical theories blindly. Yeah. And as a result, I don't know what the statistic, statistics are in Sweden, but in America, over half of all children today have a chronic illness. Yeah. Uh, we are, we have, and this is what medicine, after a century or 50 years of the most advanced so called most advanced medicine in the world we have such sick children we we have to start looking at things a little bit more open minded and not ask gee this is our theory but say what works yeah. what gives us healthier children um one of the people i like to talk about at my seminars for nutrition is a uh, weston price are yeah. you familiar with him Okay, so Weston Price was an, a dentist in Ohio. He was the head of the uh, uh, American Dental Society research. In the 30s, and 40s, yeah. In the 30s, yeah, in the 20s and 30s. And he uh, he wanted to know what was the ideal diet of humanity. And they were hearing stories. Th those days, the world was not fully explored no. uh, as like it is today. And they were hearing stories of isolated people who were in perfect health. Being a dentist, uh, you know, he was interested that they had zero cavities and straight teeth and normal formed features of the face. And he began to, uh, <clears throat> him and his wife, Indiana Jones style, uh, traveled to uh, 
dozens of different cultures, almost 300 villages all over the world. They they went to uh, through they went to isolated parts of Europe where they still ate traditionally. Yeah. Islands off the coast of Scotland, uh, high mountain valleys in Switzerland, mm. for example, that really were cut off from the rest of uh, from the the foods of commerce, as he liked to call it, the white flour and the vegetable oils and seed oils and uh, sugar and refined foods. They were cut off. They just ate traditionally. He went uh, through to America, of course. He was there to the Indian cultures in the South and in the Northwest and Eskimos and Aborigines um, that's as yet were untouched. Uh, South America, uh, Melanesia, Polynesia, Africa. It's pretty fascinating. And his book is uh, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. It's a great book. It's in print still. It's in its seventh printing. But he said, what is the best diet for humanity? Well, let's see where people are the healthiest and ask, what do you eat? Yeah. Rather than try to decide in advance what makes people healthy. Because how many diets are there today? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Oof is right. God knows, right? Dozens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so many different ones. And people and... Like trademark them as well and make them their own oh yeah and he said well let's see what people have traditionally eaten and it turns out that the traditional diets are all very similar all over the world even though uh, somebody in the northern tundra ha will have a totally different access to foods than someone living on an island in, in the pacific uh or in a de you know the aboriginal desert area versus a lush tropical rainforest they all seem to gravitate toward the same kinds of foods even though the specific food was different and this was and he discovered the ideal diet for humanity and you might dis and you'll probably discover that your traditional swedish diet is perfect for people living in sweden yeah. um and this tra traditional Scottish diet in Scotland and on and on. Um, if we look back into our past, we'll find that the traditional diets are what kept humanity healthy and, and thriving. Because the number one reason for good nutrition is to have healthy babies. Mm. And if babies are born with uh, needing wisdom teeth removed, that's a nutritional deficiency that the mother probably had and the children baby had because uh, there has to be enough room in your mouth for your teeth. Well, suddenly, um, wisdom teeth have to be removed. I'm sure your grandparents didn't have to deal with that or the great grandparents, but it's because the, the, the soil is deficient and the foods are deficient. And of course, the de de deformations of all kinds, um, physical and mental. And Weston Price, in his book, uh, deals with that. And uh, it's really, it should be required reading for every college, every chiropractic school, for sure, every medical school, um, and the general public, uh, yeah. and many lay people get into it. So I got into that simply because it's just based on results. Yeah. We want to say, what is the ideal diet? Well, let's see where people are ideal. Yeah. And when people said this KST work, I say, well, and they'll say, how do you know? I'll say, Have you done double blind studies? <laughs> and I'll say, no, every patient is a, is a clinical case study. Yeah. And now we probably have millions of them. Yeah. And I'm thank, thank God uh, KST is growing. Um, I was supposed to give seminars, oh, like three years ago, I was scheduled for two in Hamburg, one in London, and two in Brazil. Right within about a month or so, six weeks, all canceled yeah. because of the pandemic. Yeah. And uh, oh, now I'm just starting to lecture again. It's so sad. Mm. Um, but thankfully, things are more or less back to normal. Sweden is to be congratulated for being less crazy than any other country, apparently. Yeah, well, I, th I think there's a few others, but uh, yeah, in the western in the western hemisphere, in the more than than yeah, we we stand out as uh, doing the doing it the, the different way. Oh, which, I think it was yes. Yeah, <laughs> which was actually the way it was agreed that it should have been done. You know, the way we did it, it was actually how uh, apparently in the EU how it was a 
supposed to be done, but everybody else changed uh, strategy. We just stayed to what was uh, commonly agreed. In- well, I wish I lived in Sweden then. Yeah. <laughs> I think I would have had less stress than getting thrown out of stores for not wearing a mask <laughs> and yelled at, you know. Um, people are still wearing them here sometimes. It drives me nuts to see. I see a person alone in their car with their windows up wearing a mask. Think, mm-hmm. Oh, God, what's what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> but uh, people are manipulated into fear. Fear really is scary. So what we're telling people with KST is we'll get rid of those blockages so you can tune into who you are better. Yeah. Um, you make choices uh, that are wiser for you know you follow your what the body tells you to avoid and what it's more most beneficial for you yes and uh doctors who start using the work uh they get more sensitive yeah they pick up information have you noticed that yeah. every almost every doctor i've spoken to pretty much everyone who starts using kst uh, notices that their sensitivity increases in many interesting ways, yeah. uh, so, some just unique to them. Yeah. But they're, they're like, you know how you suppose people often don't trust their hunches? Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of like that. It's sort of like a hunch, because a hunch is really uh, an autonomic nervous system uh, reaction in a way. If I can get very me- mechanistic now. And uh, what you begin to start trusting uh, yourself yeah. and uh, and and your gut feeling, as they say, they, they, they you know, we have this expression. I don't know if you have in Sweden, in Sweden, your gut feeling, your yeah, gut. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then they discovered in the 70s or so that we have a, a nervous system in our intestines. Yeah. Our, our guts have about as much neurons, nerve cells as our uh, as our spinal cord. So we have at least uh, two brains. <laughs> yeah, and then we have the third up here, hopefully, as and, well. And the heart, absolutely. The heart has intense number of neurons. It's more neurological than muscular. Yeah. And so you have the heart and the spinal cord and the brain and the gut. And uh, who knows what else? What are the nervous systems we have? Well, but, that's it. But, but, but then there's, there's the way we access and gain information through our system the, the the I mean we know so much more about that you know how electromagnetic fields the the connective tissue the fascia the there's so much more knowledge now coming out how how we interact with our internal environment and external and how communication goes. Oh and, yeah, fa- the fascia you mentioned is fascinating. Yeah, um, it's uh, sort of like uh, it, it travels. Information on the fascia travels faster than the nerves. Yeah. And I learned about this from watching baseball yeah. because you have a, a pitcher throwing a, a fastball at 95 miles an hour and the batter is how many feet away? 60 feet away or whatever, at 90 feet, 60. And the nerve system can't recognize the pitch. Yeah. And yet people still hit baseballs. Yeah. <laughs> They're using a, another part of their internal communication system and it's probably the fascia. Yeah. Uh, the fascia uh, is uh, semi-crystalline. Yeah. And information travels at the speed, close to the speed of light, probably. And that's why with KST, we started, you, we had developed a meningeal technique. The meninges yeah. are the, the fascia that wrap around the brain and spinal cord and ultimately spread all over the nerves and through the muscles and organs. It's really your other body. And uh, we find that fascial restrictions, meningeal restrictions, can cause profound effects all over the person. Yeah. And that's another reason why putting people in a certain posture can be very uh, powerful yeah. when you work on them uh, in that posture. So that's my baseball story. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great one. <laughs> uh, people, you know, getting back to to the autonomic nervous system and and asking the body. In KST, you call it the occipital drop, the OD. It's, yes. It's the way that you found out, and we now know that there's other ways that we can ask the body uh, and get access to the autonomic nervous system response that the body has to different challenges, thoughts, emotions, and feelings, so that 
specifically also to know how to address what's the interference what's the blockage that arises uh, when you think about something or like reading or uh, thinking about your spouse or whatever so tell yes. dive a little bit more deeper into that you know the 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 asking finding and releasing and letting the innate intelligence do the work yeah our, well we're really connected uh, to each other and when a doctor uh, asks the patient's body's question using what I call a binary biofeedback device, it could be the occipital drop that we use in KST, which came to me from Dr. Ward, yeah. who developed a system called spinal calm stressology. It could be uh, muscle testing. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't know if you can see it with the back. Uh, yeah. it, it became yeah. a ghost, Armand. Now, now we can see it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have... Yeah. The, oh, this was, you know, this was patented. The Ohura, right. he actually gets money. I probably own 50 cents now for doing this. And <laughs> but he actually patented it. Yeah. Um, there's uh, the short leg reflex. You lay a person yeah. down in their leg. And the, I didn't know they were all the same thing. Exactly. But all the body responding to stress. Yeah. We really probably have dozens or hundreds yeah. of these little lie detector tests within yes. us. Yeah. Pseudomotor responses, subtle yeah. responses from the nervous system expressed in the skin tone, the temperature, muscles. Exactly. Tone. Heart rate variability is another one. Yeah. So you can really hook someone up and uh, just see hundreds, if not thousands, of physiological changes yeah. when a person is exposed to stress. <laughs> Initially, when we did KST, we only did it physically. And we push or pull or swipe a body part. Yeah. And that would, if it increased stress, the body would respond. And it would respond, you know, with you can have a, a weak muscle or a short leg or the occipital drop, or the breathing would change, or any of hundreds really things. But the occipital drop I found was very easy to do and had certain advantages over muscle testing because yeah. muscle testing, uh, AK and applied kinesiology, the practitioners, um, they, they would often find muscle fatigue. Yeah. You know, you do it on a person 10, 20, 30 times and their muscles would get weak and and the doctor would get weak also from all the pushing. Um, so that was with the, the OD, the occipital drop, you don't have that. You can do it a hundred times a minute and there's no weakness. Yeah. But also, we could put people in different postures. And with the, um, the KST, uh, with the, the one form of short leg reflex, you have to have them face down yeah. to ask their body by using the leg leg. But with KST, you don't have that limitation. So you can put people in different postures. Um, and we would physically push and pull body parts. Uh, in the 1960s, uh, Richard Van Rump, who had a technique called DNFT, directional knot force technique, used the leg difference as his yes no device or binary yeah. by feedback. And he was doing it and he's working on a patient and he's thinking, I wonder if their atlas is out of place. And suddenly the leg moved yeah. and he wasn't physically touching the atlas or the legs. <laughs> they moved. And he started testing this. And he realized that the body was far more sensitive than anyone ever realized. You can not only challenge, put stress on a person physically, but you can even ask mentally, uh, just verbally, say things out loud or mentally. And uh, like I said earlier, I thought this was sort of like craziness, yeah. but it works beautifully. We are far more connected and we affect each other far more than we realize. Mm. so that's part of the um the beauty of the work in which you're free to ask all kinds of questions not just uh, and also in the order things need to be corrected yes. because people are like I, I like to use the example of people are like combination locks you can know the combination but unless you know the order and that you have to spin the, the dial in, uh it won't open yeah so we are like combination locks. It's not just a matter of knowing where the person has problems. It's what order the problems need to be corrected. Yeah. Um, and I always tell people, never treat for pain. 
go to the cause. Because yeah. as you alluded to earlier, the body is nonlinear. You know, it doesn't go from A to B to C to T to E, et cetera. You can jump around A to W, W to L, L to B, B to Q. It uh, The body has its own wisdom. And we need to respect that wisdom and work with it. Um, just like we have the occipital drop or muscle testing, binary biofeedback. So the homeopaths have what they call the provings, yeah. which is really asking the body, is this the right energetic uh, fit uh, for the person? Mm. And it's really a way, and when they do their provings, which is they give people doses of, so initially to discover a, a proper remedy, they'll give people a high dose of it and see their reactions. And then they know a low dose can cure those symptoms. Uh, and that's really asking the body. They don't use biofeedback, but they're watching the body's reactions. And the world of healing is uh, very exciting, um, but it has been stifled by the the medical model, which is really said uh, that uh, you know the only thing that's wrong with you is that uh, you need a drug, and that or you you don't have or you have too many body parts, and uh, and we have a cure for that too. <laughs> But the drugs really are mostly symptomatic. They get rid of symptoms by suppressing symptoms. And when you suppress symptoms, over time, it leads to a deeper disease, chronic illness. And chronic illness never goes away. Mm. So when you, you, when you uh, 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 suppress an acute illness with drugs or vaccines, you drive it deeper into the body. Um, I had a patient, very interesting, a boy with brain tumors. And uh, he came in and I corrected him and his body broke out in a rash. Pustules, mm. little pupils full of pus, head to toe, all over. And uh, his parents were worried, kid freaked out. He's a teenager. They always freak out. Anyway, he freaked out. And they wanted to go to a dermatologist. I said, well, the dermatologist, who I consider among the most dangerous of all the medical professions, their job is to really using steroids and creams and antibiotics and then to suppress a skin eruption. Yeah. But a skin eruption is how the body detoxes. Yeah. Well, uh, they went to the dermatologist who said it was a virus of some kind, which is like the default of <laughs> when they don't know what it is. Um, but Thankfully, they did not take any of the drugs. And about a month, no, no, a few weeks, later, about a month later, he went for an MRI and his tumors had shrunk 80%. Hmm. And the, within a year, they were totally gone. And I believe that the correction, and it could have been homeopathic as well as KST. There are many ways of getting the body to work better and to cleanse itself. Um, but uh, I'm glad that that happened to him. And people have to know that symptoms are nothing to be afraid of. It's what your body uses to restore homeostasis or balance. Yeah. So uh, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, that is uh, I mean, that uh, is the core philosophy of uh, chiropractic and other health. Now looked at alternative health, but it's it's uh, a, a viewpoint that we can go to India, China, traditional. Uh, uh, ways at looking at at health is it not about something being wrong it's how can we uh, support the wisdom innate wisdom within the body yes. to do its work yes. instead of uh, it's doing it something wrong yes absolutely what you support, want to do is, is let wisdom. the body be itself that's the goal yeah. one of the goals of homeopathy and traditional healing all yeah. over the world yeah. so yeah that's incredibly important sorry about the noise uh I know it. And okay. obviously detecting where is the, uh, the blockages or miscommunication within the system of the body. I mean, there can be uh, miscommunication between one area and another area. So when that block. Oh, yeah. Is, uh, a lot uh, of it is it's so communication. You can actually, uh, and there's one interesting, we have a procedure. Um, one of the doctors that we, uh, that I taught, he he likes to use it a lot. He's popularizing it. Will you touch different body parts? Yeah. 
your head to your heart, your heart to your liver. Yeah. Uh, they do this in the technique called body talk also. Yeah. And you ask the body, is there a disconnection? Yeah. And then you correct whatever blockages there are on the body. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can use it in a lot of cool ways yeah. uh, to see if they're, the person is truly connected and energies are flowing, healing is flowing properly. There's no too much or too little you want to balance. So um, that's what KST is. And I think, thank you for those great questions. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, yeah, it's been a great honor to to talk with you and hear you. And I hope a lot of uh, listeners and viewers uh, will reach out and find out more, uh, both at, you know, reading at, uh, at your site. You have so much information, information leaflets and all your books. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh coreandwellness.com this is sort yeah. of like the general site and from there they can see the books and information and and kst yeah and also to take the the online uh, course for those that are interested in that. that that's been fascinating you know we've had lay people master the work using their yeah. online yeah. it includes about 16 hours of videos too mm. uh, as well as the manual and all um but uh, yeah that's sort of fun when you see that Everyone learns at a different pace. Yeah. Some people just pick it up really quick. Others have to work at it. Yeah. But we're all like that. I mean, it took me 10 years to figure it out. <laughs> I'm pretty slow in some ways. Oh, we're glad that you did. <laughs> thank you, Martin. Thank you. Yeah, it's thank you so much. And uh, I will put the links below for people to to click and get you know in contact and see and to see your books and uh, your website and so forth. And uh, I hope to bring you over to Stockholm again. Then uh, that'd be great. Seminar going here. Yeah, maybe not in the winter. No, uh, <laughs> summertime is better. I, I think so, <laughs> but I'm sure everybody's out then. <laughs> Nobody wants to sit in the classroom. Uh, it needs to be a good timing uh, when uh, this when there's good weather, but not too good. So late ten, tends to be like when when after the summer when people are like filled up and have had plenty of uh, sun and but it's still good weather but they can they can manage to be in indoors as well so all right good idea yeah. thank you we'll, we'll stay in September, touch. i reckon could be all um, the best to you. keep up the great work yourself thank you so we'll